All right, hey guys, what's up? I do not have an intro for this guy because I just got him from Walmart.com, had him shipped out. Today's review is of the Ceratosaurus from Jurassic World, even though it's not in Jurassic World at all. This growler line is phenomenal. Let's do this. All right, so the Ceratosaurus is a quite accurate paint job to its Jurassic Park 3 counterpart. We did not get a Ceratosaurus Jurassic Park 3 toy from Hasbro, so they made up and they gave us one for Jurassic World, even though it's not featured in Jurassic World at all. I find that very cool, so uh, tip my cap off to Hasbro for finally doing something cool and right for us. So without further ado, let's unbox this guy. Just a freaking sick box, open concept, probably the most open concept I've seen from a Jurassic World toy. Here's the back. The box art is a little aggressive. It's airbrushed for sure. It looks more pink than red. What we got here is like a, I'll get into the paint job later. The box art looks pretty sweet. Pictures everywhere and it looks great. Let's unbox, shall we? Oh yeah, pretty. This is probably the coolest looking electronic pamphlet I've ever seen in my life because of that dino damage. Here we go, chomping jaws and growling action. That's what they all do. So pull down the tail, which we're gonna do, and the mouth moves up, and then right here is a light, stupid. Um, you push it, and then it gets more growls and stuff from it. Replacement batteries, two A76 alkaline instead of like a AAA. I found that kind of dumb. But hey, what can you do? Really cool that Hasbro puts colors, the color of the animal in the string. I found that really sweet. Just a nice little detailing for the packaging. Ooh, I like the size of this. Here we are, the Ceratosaurus. Ooh, wait a minute. I really like that echo at the end there. You guys notice that? Compared to the React Attack 3 T-Rex, I'm gonna compare it to in a second here. The paint blemishes are not too... Jeez. Paint blemishes aren't really that bad on her. I'm, I'll just keep it, I guess. I got a, a black dot there. Get close and I'll show you. There we go, we got it. So paint blemish there, and we got our pink paint blemish down here. Bam. It looks small on the screen there, but in person it's very noticeable. Articulation. This doesn't move. So articulation. This doesn't move much at all. This is the range of motion for the left foot. Okay, I already know this is going to be a problem. Hypersensitive electronics here. Right foot doesn't move much at all either. You see this little cutout here. That's how much range of motion we get from this guy. For the legs, the arms pretty much have 360 for the right arm. The left arm has barely 180. You get what you get here. That's for the articulation. His mouth is in an open posture. and It closes up when you push his tail down. You notice anything? This is the same exact roar. They gave the Ceratosaurus the T-Rex roar. Hasbro, you could have easily gave a generic roar for the Ceratosaurus. I remember when that bald guy with the glasses, he demoed the Ceratosaurus. He's like, this is the Ceratosaurus? And he pushed the button right there. And I was just like, no, you gave it the Jurassic Park 3 React Attack electronics. Why the hell would you do that? At least the... Electronic for the tail is different than this one. But this electronic is still a T-Rex. That is really dumb. This figure does kick butt. It's a nice size. It feels overall really nice. I like the spines on the top here. Ceratosaurus apparently had a armored backplate all over its back. And I don't think in Jurassic Park 3 that one did, and I don't think this one really does either, but at least it's got a, an almost feel there. And of course, the awesome horn on top, you can't have a Ceratosaurus without the horn on top. And they're supposed to have horns really on the top of the eyes here, and they kind of do. So overall, it's not too bad. Proportion-wise, she is... Uh, she's okay. I guess better than this. It seems to me the neck is a little big. If you have the jaw down and open, the neck looks too big, but if you close the jaw, the neck looks okay. Tail should be a little bit bigger, but then again, this tail is curved. And we're gonna compare her in scale to the other animals, like two Allosauruses that I have. Actually, I have three Allosauruses, because the Ceratosaur is very much compared to the Allosaurus class. Let's just talk screw holes first. We have one, two, three, four, 
These here on the back left aren't that noticeable. These ones here on the right near the head definitely are. Probably because that silver one's like staring straight at me. And these are more recessed in the body. You can't even really see it on camera. But besides the screw holes, if you ignore that stuff, this sculpt looks really nice. I already talked about the back plate. The spines and the back plate, they look really nice. This leg is really nicely sculpted. Nice calves. The feet look pretty good. This uh, hip looks very nice. Let me get close. Look at that detailing. Look at that cinematography. That detail looks really nice. This is a really nice sculpt. The growler line, I was going to talk about it later, but the growler line are hands down the best toys that Hasbro's given us for the Jurassic World line. Each one of the growlers, the blue, the Morphodon, Ceratosaurus, the Lophosaurus, all of them are must-buys in my opinion. For 15 bucks, they pretty much squash the react attack growlers so let's talk paint i do want to say this real quick i want to compare it to the stomp and strike here in a second her fingers have paint on them and the stomp and strikes fingers do not have paint on them isn't that crazy that stomp and strikes a 35 dollar toy and it's a 15 dollar toy but she has paint on her fingers and the stomp and strike doesn't that's so stupid but let's talk paint this is a not 100 percent accurate jurassic park 3 ceratosaurus paint job but it is so so close and i love it i'm not gonna lie this paint job is really cool this is one of the top 10 of the line paint jobs i really like it it's very distinguishable you see this on the shelf and you'll be like oh that's a jurassic park 3 ceratosaurus ceratosaurus I'll talk about this later, but very underrated. No one really cares about the Ceratosaurus. Ceratosaurus was in like one of the very first dinosaur films. What was it called? Like One Million Years BC. And uh, it fought the Triceratops. They pretty much lost. I mean, you, it's been a while since I've seen the movie. I was a kid. But Ceratosaurus, I thought actually at the time it was a T-Rex. But this is one of the very first dinosaur stars of all time. And uh, no one really cares about it. It took us a while to, to get it in Jurassic Park 3. And it was kind of crapped on Jurassic Park 3. It was just like, huh? You smell like poop. I'm going to break the fourth wall and look at the camera. Oh, then we're going to go away. Joe Johnston. Ugh. Let's talk paint job. Yes, the paint job looks just like a Jurassic Park 3 Ceratosaurus. The paint kind of stops a third of the tail, but to be honest with you, it looks pretty good in my opinion. It looks really good. You got the really yellow creamish looking. At the top, it's like this cream red, like an off red, desaturated red, and then black. And then the black's not like just straight up black stripes. It's like a fabric stripe. You can see that. It actually looks really sharp. I really like it a lot. There is paint on each toe, on all the claws, everything. Even right here on the fourth claw of the foot. And I really do like this paint job, even on this back side here. It covers all the copyrights and stuff for the toy. I really think that's great uh, detailing for that. The electronics, this is a hypersensitive light, which is stupid. I'm gonna cover up the back end here. The light's really stupid. But I really like, I mean, you can see the outline here, but I really like how it's the same exact cream and it matches the body rather than something like this. It's just straight up gashed out. This doesn't look that noticeable. It's actually really nice. I like it a lot. And I really like the jelly clear red, the crystal red that they have there. I think that looks really nice. Now the back side for the slits for the electronics is definitely noticeable, but eh. But the best part about this animal, if it isn't the paint job, it's how fluid this tail is. Let me cover the back end. It is so smooth. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's the smoothest action feature of a dinosaur toy ever. Ever. This dinosaur, I think, has the greatest, most fluid action feature of a dinosaur toy ever. Whoever did this toy did a fantastic job and needs a raise. So I really, really like this toy. I really do. The, the sculpt for the tail here, you got ridges on each side, left side and the right side. Just very, very nice. This is a really cool figure. Inside of the mouth, the eye looks a little cartoony. He's got like this, uh, you got even black paint up top the ridge of the eye. And uh, even the, the beige, it fades down here to the cream red. And the inside of the mouth, all the teeth has paint. The mouth, even, okay, the biggest problem I have, I'm just gonna use my knife. Biggest problem I have is this area right here is never painted on any of the toys. But for this growler, this one's painted, and I love it. And the tongue looks really nice. The tongue looks really accurate. This is a great figure. Like, even the paint here, I'm going to push this down. You can see that they even painted the area, about, like, right here, that is usually covered by the tail. And usually Hasbro cheaps out, and they don't paint that area. So I found that really awesome. This is a great figure. On the bottom of the feet, it does have its, like, chomping wrecks, like, cutouts. But it's a very flat cutout. And you obviously see this toy has no balancing issues whatsoever. So this toy kicks a lot of booty. I even like the details of 
you know, you have usually dinosaurs. You got your cream, and then it'll fade up to the red. But right here, this is amazing detailing. Let's get close. The cream just not only fades here, but it creeps up all the way up top here, stops almost at the very top ridge. This one, it continues up to the mouth ridge. It comes up all the way up top and on the top of the head. It looks so sharp. This is seriously a, a really good looking toy. I was actually thinking about giving this a mid-range score, but this is actually blowing my mind. The more I talk about this, and the more I hold this in my hands, I'm just like, wow, this is great. So let's get into some comparisons. Let's do humans, and I'm gonna do that T-Rex. Here's Jurassic Park 3, Billy Brennan, which is actually not in the film. He's, uh, you know, with the Pteranodons. Is this uh, in scale? Kinda, I think the Ceratosaurus is like a little bit bigger in real life. I would say these are play compatible. That looks really cool, I like that a lot. Let's see Kenner. This might be like a almost fully adult Ceratosaur. Eh, maybe not. Ceratosaur would probably be about right there in real life. But uh, it's still play compatible with your Kenner toys. These two, you can really see how goofy the Jurassic Park 3 stuff is, I guess. He's gonna have to do that because he doesn't stand. I haven't taken him out of the box. This is pretty much in scale to one another. This Ceratosaurus is on the flat part of the toy here. And of course, Allosaurus is bigger than the Ceratosaurus, and she is. So that is actually pretty awesome. Two more Allosaurus is this one included. The Take Me Apart Allosaurus from the medical center of Lost World and Ceratosaurus. And you see that this uh, Allosaurus is, right because the limbs are so long, is taller than the Ceratosaurus. It may be a little bit too tall, because Ceratosaurus would probably be about a little bit taller there. So, but is it play compatible? I would say that new Hasbro one might be a little bit more play compatible, but this one still is. It's really cool. Look at the size of these guys. Yeah, they're nearly in scale, so I think that's really cool. Basher Biter Allosaurus and the Ceratosaurus. You can see that this Allosaurus has to be like a juvenile. Ceratosaurus is too big. Yeah, blue is just way too big. <laughs> blue is way too big. If blue's an adult, this one's like a almost an infant ceratosaurus. So you can see the sizing of those guys is definitely off. It's almost like the same exact scale. Make them the same size! Good job, Hasbro. Chomping. Wow, this is definitely not in scale. Yep. Uh, I mean, this is pretty much, I would say, a juvenile T-Rex, you can say, the chomping. And a juvenile T-Rex should be about the same size as Ceratosaur. So this Ceratosaur, this is pretty much a baby compared to the chomping. Carnotaur Lost World and Ceratosaur. It's day and night how big this Carnotaur is. That's why we created it, because it lights up. Yeah, lighting up stuff. No. Carnotaurs, I believe, are a little bit bigger than Ceratosaurus. So this is obviously not in scale. You got the Utah Raptor, which dwarfs it. Jeez, not that compatible. JP Series 1 and Ceratosaur, more so compatible. So that's actually, uh, to be honest with you, I think this actually looks like the better toy. You know, this one has a lot of nostalgia. This one looks pretty nice. So that one's way more play compatible realistic-wise than this one, I would say. Of course, Young T-Rex, these should be about the same size, and they're totally not. Eh, whatever. Let's stomp and strike. And the Ceratosaur. That's just embarrassing how small the Ceratosaur is compared to the Stomp and Strike. Shouldn't be that small. T-Rexes are big, but not that much out of scale with one another. Are these play compatible? Yeah. This looks better. If you only had... Okay. If I had to sell one... I mean, I love T-Rexes, but for some reason I really... I really like this Ceratosaur. This, this paint job is really nice. So final thoughts. I don't remember if I told you to get this one from the store or not when I did my toy hunt like a month ago. And these things have been sold out as well as the Dilophosaurus Growler. They've just been sold out, these Wave 2 Growlers. Scalpers have been taking them and putting them on eBay and Amazon for like at least double the price. I just did a video about that. And uh, yeah, so if you guys are huge Ceratosaur fans, I would definitely pick this up. This is really nice. And please try to buy it from like Walmart.com like I did. So, final score, she does have some flaws. I obviously don't like the light up feature. Her proportions are okay. The back's got screw holes, they're not as noticeable on the back side here, but this one's definitely noticeable. The slits are on the right side instead of the underbelly, that kind of sucks. But this paint job is like a 10 out of 10. This tail is like a 10 out of 10. She has paint on her fingers, unlike the Stomp and Strike. My Stomp and Strike actually just painted with a marker, <laughs> black paint on the fingers there 
I also did that for the chomping. Hasbro doesn't want to do that, but they'll do that for, you know, the lesser toys, which makes no sense. But that's cool. I'll take this. This is a really nice toy. I thought I was going to give it a 7. I think I'm going to give it an 8. This toy kicks a lot of butt, I think. I recommend you picking it up, especially if you're a Ceratosaur fan. If you already are a Ceratosaur fan, you probably already have this, though. But uh, this is a really, really nice toy. I really like this. This is really cool. So like this video if you already have it down below. And click the subscribe button if you're not subscribed because I have lots of videos coming. So stay tuned.